Hey, Ooh. today is day 21 on the Appalachian Trail and Greybeard is coming into play. But uh, I'm at the top of another ball. This is the first climb of the day. There will be another climb and, uh, and then it's a general descent down into Hot Springs where I will take a day off, but I don't know if you can see it, but there's just kind of a nice view back there. It's been windy as usual. Uh, one thing I have changed is I put my um, water filter right here. Every time I get to a stream, I will grab some water and just chug it down. And then I also have my two bottles of water so I don't get dehydrated. So there we are, day 21. Talk to you later. This is what the 4,600 feet looks like today. <sighs> That's a miserable climb. Now it's time to go down. Hey, that was a... Quite a storm up top. Um, still, the winder, winds are whipping, but the whole time allowed me some time to think. One of the hikers, as he was leaving the tent, was talking about, not the tent, the shelter was talking about um, fear mongering on the AT. And so, it seems like every time there's a little wrinkle in the weather, the word gets spread like wildfire up and down the AT community. And it's like a call for everybody to run for the shelters, run for the towns, run to get protected. And we experienced this early on, and I think I may have talked about it couple weeks ago where we came into a uh, um, kind of to a gap and there was a show, there was a uh, hostel there and everybody was talking about the horrible storm that was coming through and so at 11:30 we called we called our hike off and spent the day kind of just hanging out and then went into uh, you know, kind of hibernation mode for the day, for the rest of the day. Got up the next morning, it was like sprinkling out. There was like no major, there was no storm. And it, you know, it might have rained at night, but we all, we all have tents and we all have shelters. Um, so that's kind of, I think you just got to, you know, heed his warning of not really paying attention to the fear mongering that might be out there on the AT. Um, but then another subject, well, I was heading up over that last mountain and just how gray it was. And they talk about the green tunnel, you know, when spring hits and you're just walking in a big green tunnel. I dubbed that the gray tunnel and the gray, it just was so dark and ominous. It reminded me of um, like Monty Python's Holy Grail and we were out searching for the grail. And then it just got me thinking of all the different scenes in Monty Python with the shrubbery and every creak I heard, you know, I was like, oh, what was that? What was that? And then you turn quickly, and you turn quickly. But it's really, it's really interesting, this whole hike, because that's kind of, you get into these situations and you think, oh, this is no big deal. But if it was 40 mile an hour winds with rain whipping down on a Saturday morning, I, I didn't think this would be so uphill. It's been downhill for about three miles. Now it just all of a sudden goes uphill. Um, I just stay on my couch and watch cartoons. 
<laughs> you know, whereas we're out here. We're just hiking. We're just moving forward, hoping to get to hot springs and be able to take a day off, which is very needed. Kind of update on my shin. Uh, anterior tibialis. But I also notice that, well, I have edema, from, peripheral edema, from the many blood clots that I've had in the past. And I think that's complicating things with my, with my shin because my leg fills up. And the socks that I wear at night, while they're warm, are, um, I think, causing the edema to not be able to dissipate overnight. Like, you know, normally I don't sleep with socks on. Um, so, what that thinks, what I think, is that I'll end up with uh, going into town and hopefully finding some very lightweight um, compression stockings that I can I can use uh, at night to help with the edema, but it'll also help with the tendonitis that I've got going on. So that's that's one thing. Earlier, I showed you my water, and um, I've been doing a lot better today. When I come by a stream or whatever, I just put some in the in the filter, suck it out, get very hydrated. I feel really good as far as hydration today. Um, granted, it was a colder or cooler, colder day, but that's uh, that's where that is. And then the, another topic that I've been thinking of is my carnivore diet. I love my carnivore diet. I will f most likely forever be close to carnivore, if not fully carnivore, when I get back from the trail. But what I'm realizing is, and I'm sure several of you have told me this, but the availability of good quality carnivore foods are lacking on the Appalachian Trail. I was at um, the hostel the other night and my dinner consisted of four yogurts, which were vanilla, so there was sugar in it, um, a protein bar, and what else? The uh, Oh, and then I had a beer which I don't normally do, but there was like no other availability of anything remotely carnivore. And I think they might have had beef jerky for like 10 bucks for three ounces. And I'm like, it's not even worth it. So with that said, I'm going to be looking long and hard at what the availability is for proteins and fats so that I can maintain a high fat diet as close to carnivore as I can while I'm out here because I need to have, I need to have that energy in order to call it go the distance because my primary goal is to be standing at the top of Katahdin, arms raised like everybody else. Uh, most likely another 30 pounds lighter, but that's that. So that's the, the carnivore and I will continue to update that. I feel like as we head north, there'll be more availability of, of meats and cheeses you know, uh, that's something that more that I'm used to. Um, but right now, like the hostels, I mean, they cater to what the, 
what the hikers want and the hikers want lots of processed sugars to keep themselves going and fat and then they'll do a big carb meal and I just uh, want to avoid that a little bit because that doesn't I don't run well that way so I will be in hot springs probably in a couple hours it's very easy hiking at this point not even using my poles I think you can see them behind me um, my shins bothering me but it feels okay for now so I'll check in again when I get to hot springs uh, staying at the Laughing Heart uh, Hostel, I believe. So I'll check in then. Phew, made it down to Hot Springs. So I'm gonna find the hostel and go in and enjoy the night. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Thanks for following along.